Hello, to Sage here on the Sage channel. I got a little something here for you guys today called the War Tower. It's a tower, not designed for planets, mind you. It's a tower floating in space, as you can see here. It sort of is inspired by almost the Lord of the Rings towers, like the two towers, mainly, I believe it was Saruman's tower, the way it had a few forks at the top. Really, his just went straight up, I believe, around the top, but whatever. That was sort of what inspired it. It's obviously a warship. Um, well, you might think it's a war station. It's actually designed to be a ship. I'll actually go ahead and just zoom in on it really quickly. I'll speed up my movement speed too. You can see we got thrusters all around it along the center section. It's obviously a symmetrical design where we have the center section here, which is living, and then the top and bottom above and below the living areas are all the same, at least on the outside. You can see in each of the sections, we got three small 23 millimeter Gatling turrets. These are the modded ones from the OKI weapons pack. We got the 50 millimeter monstrosities here, which actually I really love watching these bigger guys fire. And then we got these huge, I believe it is 230 something millimeter monsters up here or down here, depending on how you want to look at it. I'm actually going to switch over the mouse and keyboard. It's less jittery it feels or I don't know, it's easier to control. Anyway, let's fly up to the top. It's exactly the same. So on the top and the bottom, you do have a connector here mixed with four more thrusters to give it propulsion. That means there's four thrusters in each direction. So this thing is incredibly slow. Now I do have a cutaway of the station over here that'll actually give you an idea of its inner workings here. And basically what I did is I took half the station, well, half the station, ignoring the center station block, and just removed all the heavy armor here. And so you'll be able to actually see what the piping on the inside is. And it's pretty simple. We'll start at the bottom, work our way up. You got our piping leading to all the turrets, all hidden behind at least one layer of heavy armor, or at least one layer of even small bit of heavy armor. That pipes into a main pipe. Oh dear, this isn't supposed to be there. Go away, random block. It goes into a reactor, or into a cargo container, which hooks into a reactor, which hooks into another cargo container, which of course allows it to fork out and connect all these different paths that are going up and down here into one another through the cargo container. Because I'm pointing that out, because once we get up to here, you'll notice that these paths that go up and down, they're only these three turret lengths long. After that point, this is the only pipe that goes up and down. It's because I needed the extra space here to put in gyroscopes, as well as the fact that going through the living area, I didn't want to have a bunch of space taken up by redundant piping. Now, it isn't so bad that all the car goes down here, because of course at the top we do have another car container or two there. Actually, we've got four car containers up there and only three down there. But you can also notice that those gyroscopes were attached to jump drive. So this ship's main way of getting about is via jump drive. And then it's got the thrusters and the gyroscope, so it'll still have some maneuverability, even though it'll be extremely, extremely slow. All these containers, by the way, are all filled up with ammunition for these weapons, as well as reactors being filled up with uranium. It should also be pointed out that on this level right here, you can see we have an antenna stuck down here just above the living area, as well as I believe it is three oxygen tanks. Ah, yes, four oxygen tanks and one oxygen generator. Inside the oxygen generator, which is piped in through the top right here that connects to these conveyors, it actually has two, actually I can go ahead and show you, I can do the control space bar and just bring our character over here. I can just show you that inside of this we have two hydrogen tanks just filled up, or hydrogen bottles, 8,000 ice that I just tossed in there. And so it's, this is ready so that if anybody needs to fill up their spacesuits, hydrogen tanks, they can just grab one of these and do so. Because this isn't really a ship designed to live, make people live comfortably. It's more of a ship that's going to be a, around a main base or just on patrol. Well, not even on patrol. It's just going to be a stationary point usually, or it's going to go with an attack fleet to be a slower moving just weapons platform and as such it's not really designed to resurrect people who die so there's not actually a medical bay in here there's only the three beds i'll show you a bit more of the inside once we actually go back to a the more complete one over there moving up we of course have much of the same as we had before we have our jump drives our storage containers no gyroscopes up here and up at the top it's exactly the same as down at the bottom of course just mirrored and as i said we do have a connector point here it's going to be difficult for any ship or station to reach this but i figure if they go to dock it with a larger station the station probably has a connector on a piston that can just reach down and connect into it so there you go that's the inner workings of this thing pretty simple and straightforward the cutaways make this a lot quicker than it would be explaining this otherwise very happy with the structure overall. I'll go ahead and head back to the other one we can fly inside and then we'll do some shoosting with it as well. I should also point out there was one more thing. Ah, I'm sure you've been seeing this. It's really quite annoying. 
with the pipes right there, you can see that in the most recent update, they removed the windows, except for in one of the LODs. LODs is a different model it loads in. The farther away you get, the idea of being able to load in a different model to save on memory. And you can see it sort of does that pixely effect when it loads it in. One of the models, when you get farther enough away, still has the window in it, and then eventually it fades out again. So they need to replace that LOD model or just get rid of it all together. Anyway, let's go ahead and head back to the other station, hop inside it. It's pretty cool seeing it from a distance like this, isn't it? All the piping and stuff there. I do think they should put something, some sort of pattern or detail in there. I know that uh, piping is still um, just placeholder models, but hopefully when they do the texture, they'll have something there that'll actually make that pop out a bit more because it was having nice having those windows there to break that up. Anyway, let's head inside the station. Got ourselves some modded doors. You do have gravity just inside the living area, extending, well, not really very far outside, but a bit above it. That's about it. Like, just outside that door, there's no gravity. Uh, let's go ahead and close this door, please. Close, close, thank you. Oh, God, and squish me almost. There we go, and now we're in the main bridge area here. Got an assortment of seats. One of the main reasons for this is, well, if you want to jump in a seat and fly it in any of these directions, since it is such a symmetrical ship, you'll be able to do so. And then, of course, we got our one generator stuck, gravity generator stuck right here to give us the gravity that's allowing us to walk around right now. You'll also notice that up in the ceiling, we have a vent, which is oxygenating this whole room. And it's set that if this room is depressurized, it should close that door. I didn't bother making a group and setting it up to all the other doors because I figured if this room's been depressurized, it's most likely from something outside. And therefore, the room's breached and it's pointless to close an airlock door. This door, if we head down here, is leading to the living area, which we got a little glimpse at. It's a bit dark, honestly, if you look here. Bit dark, but at least you've got a place to sleep and a place to work on your own personal files if, let's say, they do set this ship on a patrol or on a stationary defense mission where you're not actually going and actually going to war with it, which might be a mistake. Down here, we also have a cargo container, so if you're living down here and you need to access something from cargo, you can. We do have all, all access to all the cargo stuff. And then this has its own vent, which is set, of course, again, to close that door if something goes wrong down here. That way, the top and bottom areas can be separated from one another. Alrighty, that's that for this ship. I think I've gone over pretty much everything. It's really quite simplistic design in a lot of ways. What we're going to go ahead and do now is gain control of this ship. And we're going to select the other war tower. And we're just going to set it all to be owned by Space Pirates. And luckily for us, I have their turrets offline. Hmm. Well, that's all right. That's fine and dandy. Let's go ahead and select this. We're going to select the turrets group because I do have lighting groups and the turrets groups control the turrets. Let's turn the turrets on. And now you can see it's a pretty hefty battle. I mean, I, I'm pretty impressed overall with the thing. It's, um, well, you can go in the spectator. Take a look over here and see it just eats through stuff pretty well. Of course, this isn't exactly the best demonstration considering this structure is missing most of its armor, especially from this angle. But what we can do is copy the structure and paste in... Oh, I must have missed. Oh, I'm sitting in a chair. Of course, I can't copy it. There we go. And paste in another one over there. Yep, and you see now they're all firing at it. <laughs> I love the hailstorms of fire. And, um, this was also slightly inspired by The Matrix, the third movie where you see all the ships docked. When all the drones come through the ceiling, it's just beautiful. That's what sort of inspired me to put so many guns on here. And, of course, to make that arching area on top. Anyway, that's this station toast. What we're going to go ahead and do now is basically have a battle between a few of these. And you see I've copied a few in now. There we go. Is that one moving? That one's moving. That's not good. Um, let's not have an impact. That um, <laughs> wasn't intentional. Yeah, as you can see there, those thrusters are pretty weak. But what we're going to do now is go into our F8 here. So we can actually see this when this happens. We're going to select one of the towers that we just spawned in. Not sure which one this is. And we'll set this one to be Space Pirates. And now it's actually going to fight back as well. So now you can see... The one on the far right is the enemy one, and all the turrets are attempting to destroy it. And we got a fair few towers, so we could actually go ahead and take control of our ship and start moving it and rotating and everything. And as I said, it's a super slow thing. We've actually taken some damage looking at the top of our ship there. Uh, I don't know if that was from turret-friendly fire. I have noticed a little bit of turret-friendly fire still happens with these modded turrets, but nowhere near as bad as it used to be. Wow. 
And you can see that they've completely annihilated that one now. <laughs> it's pretty cool that as I rotate too, the guns are of course, you know, repositioning and more weapons are coming into uh, range at the same time. I can even show that better if I go to uh, this view and go to F9 and I rotate like this. That's pretty cool, I think, as it rotates new weapons coming into range and firing and watching the turrets on the bottom track. That's pretty damn cool. Anyway, we didn't fare the best there. We took a fair amount of damage to this one right here, this buddy of ours. And you see it got cut right in two. And in fact, I'd go so far as to say maybe that was friendly fire from this ship, not recognizing that it had an ally sitting here. That could definitely be it. And you'll notice that it's actually drifting downwards very slowly. Something must have impacted it pretty badly. You will notice, though, that the enemy station... Oh my god, there's nothing left of it. I didn't expect it to be so thoroughly just... Disintegrated. It's, there's just nothing left. It's just a field of nothing. Uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves one more enemy station here. We've got two more buddies out there. We'll choose one of them. No idea which one it is. And we'll go ahead and set this to Space Pirates. Oh, it's the one that's already damaged. That's a bad day for it. <laughs> and we'll rotate ourselves about again, because it's always fun to be the random rotating station of fun, ain't it? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, wow, and it found something else to its left to shoot at, apparently. I'm going to keep accelerating the spin, though. What the hell is it shooting at over there? Nothing there. <laughs> anyway, let's just keep... Let's just, let's just sit here and watch it just completely... I annihilate the station. Oddly, some of those big turrets on the station on our far left don't seem to be tracking properly down to it. Rather oddly, they're, um, like this one here. What the hell are you doing, man? Come on, aim. This guy got it. Wow, and this station fared way better than the previous one, actually. Um, there's something left of it. <laughs> Oh man, that is that is quite entertaining. Shall we shall we blow up a few more just for the heck of it? Why why not? It's quite enjoyable to just watch stuff blow up. Oh, what's that tool song? I need to watch things die from a good safe distance. <laughs> Comes to mind here. Oh boy. That one is moving so quickly. <laughs> uh those poor, poor thrusters trying so damn hard to stop it. Like, please stop it! Luckily, I don't think they do damage to the stuff around it, so their flames are not going to fry everything. Okay, let's go ahead and connect to another one. Let's actually be in this seat when we do it. That way we don't accidentally turn the one we're in into an enemy target. And grab that one. And bad guy mode. Ho! Oh! Let's grab another one, too. Oh my god, that's such chaos. And bad guy mode. It's like they're being hacked by some enemy. There we go. There we go. F8. That's not the one I'm in, is it? Did I somehow just take over the one I'm in? Uh oh. Let's just go to first person really quickly. I might have. Oh, how did I do that? Um, yeah, the power's gone out, so they've taken out the reactors. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, boy. Yeah. The sim speed's obviously slowed down, but that's quite the- Oh my god, look at all the different segments of the show. Oh, the floor's gone. There's not much left here. You can see all the oxygen bottles just floating above me from where the oxygen tanks used to be because I did have oxygen tanks in there as well as hydrogen. Um, wow, I don't know if I switched my station into an enemy station. I might have derped on that. Or if I switched another station into an enemy one and it targeted me. Looks like I must have switched my own damn station into an enemy one. I thought I was being more cautious than that. I thought I'd press K and switch to one that wasn't already selected. <laughs> Oops. Blimey, that was, um, something else. I saw something whizzing past me. I don't know what that was. <laughs> and you see that one that got flung up to the air is uh, now the only one <laughs> left, I think, of the enemy fleet. God, this game can be so cool at times. It might be sim speedy, it might be laggy, multiplayer might still be a nightmare sometimes, but... Oh, uh, things like this are pretty damn cool. Imagine having a battle like this over a real planet, too, once those finally come out, whenever they do. <laughs> and all the wreckage falling down onto the planet below. Shame the uh, turrets don't seem to be tracking very well on the enemy structures. They completely annihilated the base at the bottom here. Oh, well, the turrets are going to stop firing now. It's all gone out of range. 
You can see it works pretty well too when stuff is at a distance because those turrets there can actually, they're set up so they can actually aim downwards a bit. And so can these, so anything like right here can even be hit. Oh, blimey. Well, like I said, it's gone out of range now. Uh, those dinky little thrusters are just so ill inadequate. One of the reasons this thing is called a tower too is because obviously it jumps in and then it just sort of sits there and tries not to be destroyed <laughs> instantly. Not my most successful ship, I think, for mobile defense or operations, but should be decent when it comes to just standing still and having a fight. Yeah. Okay, well, let's do one more little burst real quick. That one's gone way out there. It's out of range of the ships, and I'm not about to chase it with one. Um, what are we doing? We're just floating in the asteroid field. Well, not asteroid field, the debris field. Let's go ahead and pop in one more enemy right around here. Let's, let's do, a, like, some just chaos, shall we? Let's do some pure blood chaos. And oh, it's funny that they're moving while I paste them in. I guess I was moving my mouse a bit more. They're all going to start drifting like crazy now. Uh, and let's just select them and start setting them to enemies, eh? So I got one, you... I almost said select, set you to space spiders. So I'd say the one at the very bottom is definitely the enemy in this grouping. And then you, let's also do... Come on, select faster. There we go. Oh no, it didn't take. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes. There we go. So yeah, now the one at the middle bottom has been pretty much destroyed. And now the ship at the left has also been hacked. I like them moving slowly. It's pretty nifty. And you can even some, see some ammo on the left side of the screen just sitting there. Floating through space from where a station used to be. Just like I said, I did have enough ammo on these things to let them fire for quite a while. Oh man. <laughs> That's a, that's a chaotic scene. Yep. I think it would do decent as a jump-in ship. That would jump in and give some pretty hefty firepower. Um, again, if it's bored and it's crews killed, they're on their own. But it's not really meant to be on its own. It's supposed to work with other things or just be near base defending, I guess. I'm happy with it, honestly. Oh, man. That ship at the bottom middle got destroyed, didn't it? And if you're wondering, let's check our sim speed. And this is running at 12% of normal speed. So these battles, if they were going at normal speed, would be over so quickly. It's amazing. I don't know if they'll ever fix that sim speed issue for big battles like this. I honestly don't. But I can only hope that one day we will have massive, incredible battles like this. And they'll run smooth as butter. I doubt it. But maybe one day. A few years down the line. <laughs> big battles are gonna always take something I suspect. Anyway guys, I think that's about that. We'll go ahead and hopefully see the end of this enemy ship on the left and then we'll go ahead and take a look at it and the uh, ship in the center there. Oh my god, look at the way it's turning. Oh my god. What the hell just happened? Maybe like something broke and the pieces rammed each other in some weird way? Did not expect that. That's very odd. I see some stray bullets going towards the Sage Station, too, from the enemy tower. Wow. Alrighty. Heck, why is it not dead? Look at all the bullets. It's, I'm amazed that they're still firing at something. You'd think just with the hailstorm, of, even though they're mostly 23mm, you'd think they would have just annihilated anything there. I mean, look at the most of the ship is a husk at this point. Let's, let's spectator this up, shall we? God, look at the hailstorm coming off this thing. Oh, there's two of them right here. They've sort of collided. I didn't even realize that. Ooh, it's a bit laggy, ain't it? There's, there's, look at the... I think that's the sound of the big cannons going off. There's just so many of them. It's like almost percussion drums or something. It's, uh... Oh, oh they're, they're getting quieter. Does that mean it's about to stop firing? Oh, something definitely... Yeah, they're done. Who's still firing? <laughs> Someone's still firing at something floating somewhere. Probably way out there. Alrighty, well there we go. Um, we've look at this whole area of space that like we've completely wrecked. 
Uh, I think one way to cut down on some speed issues in the future, the devs might do this, is just make stuff that's f drifting slow down after a certain amount of time. I think they might already do that, but it'd be amazing if this like whole field right here would just stop spreading out and just be like, stay just as it is. This field of pure destruction. Oh man, <laughs> our first little station that got blown up and then the other ones, there's just, there's nothing left, is there? I mean, there's one down here that's pretty impressive looking. It's just slowly drifting, but there's nothing left of it. Anyways, that is that. Jesus turret, would you... What are you aiming at? What is this? <laughs> One little control seat. And it does not have the aim to get rid of that. And the other war tower is still out there. <laughs> Anyways, that's that. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed that. Um, it was pretty insane. There's like a million different frames of this video that would just make a great desktop background almost. Oh, I love the wreckage and carnage just floating about. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, poor Sage Station just got completely torn open. Anyway guys, that is that. Thanks a bunch for watching, and I shall see you guys and gals next time. Ta-ta!